Right, hello and welcome to the Two Connected Podcast. We are back after a long delay since February and I'm trying out a new version where I'm videoing it at the same time so I can appear both on YouTube talking to you and talk to you just through audio form as the podcast was originally intended. Um, so we've been away from the, the podcast game for quite a while. Uh, me and Harry did a batch in January and February but um, amongst all the other stuff we were doing, <laughs> releasing singles and stuff, the podcast kind of fell off. But um, being a big podcast fan myself um, and listening to them all the time, I've got a deep desire in my heart to do podcasts, you know. Um, so I wanted to bring it back. I haven't really made any special plans of how to bring it back yet, apart from just, just starting and kind of seeing where it goes. Because um, I think it could be quite a good way to do like behind the scenes to Kaneko stuff. Um, but we just haven't quite like nailed it yet. But anyway bringing the podcast back i am back and i'm videoing myself doing which is quite a weird sensation um but (laughs) so hi if you're watching in the visual form i'm really sorry that my backdrop is so boring um and hello if you're listening in audio so what are we going to talk about today um rather than the kind of deeper question mindset stuff that i've sometimes gone through in the past or the less deep stuff where i've just talked about guitars um we're going to talk a bit about the new album that's um, getting close to being finished, at least in terms of the tracking um, and the like, actual recording process, is really, really getting close to the end. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about... I said I wasn't going to talk about not deep stuff like guitars, but I am going to talk about guitars. Um, <laughs> I'm going to talk about how the new album led me to getting new gear um, and discuss the whole world around that. And then anything else I think of as I start rambling, because um, it's all in here. Um, so who who knows what will come out um, in this audio deluge of information, I don't know. Um, so let's get into it. So the new album. Um, so I assume if you're listening to the podcast, you know that we're up up to up to no good making albums. Um, but if you didn't know that, so uh, we decided to record our second full album um we decided earlier this year, so we started tracking in March. Um, we were we we spent a little while just releasing some singles. So, uh, in in twenty twenty, we released Square One and Plan B, and I think we released Mono Lake as a single um, later in twenty twenty. Um, and then we released two singles at the beginning of twenty twenty one of Digital Native and Bikes Without Breaks. Um, but we had this collection of songs. I mean, I think loads of musicians have had this experience that over uh, the COVID period where you're more locked down, lo- locked in your room with nothing to do, like uh, musicians are kind of fortunate in some way that we do have something to do and that's make music. Um, so I think we'll see quite a lot of uh, new albums come out like this year and, you know, over in the short term because I think there is a lot of music being written just due to the like global situation. Um, but we had that situation too. I wrote lots of songs over the lockdown period. Um, uh, that, that included um, Digital Native and Bikes That Breaks, the ones we released as singles. Um, but me and Harry decided earlier this year that we wanted to put that into a more long form piece. Like I know albums are so out these days. <laughs> it's all about releasing a single every week or something. Um, and we've tr- we have tried that, um, but we found don't know like it worked for us and we quite enjoyed doing it um we enjoyed kind of just i don't know the quick nature we used to re- like in the lo- earlier lockdown of 2020 which happened in oh no 2021 sorry so in the uk into early 2021 that like, we went into a sort of second third i think it was lockdown um for quite a few months like, over the winter so that's when me and harry decided to just do what we could and record songs like in the flat so they're all using like electronic drum kits and that kind of thing um, so not like our ideal recording scenario, but it was fun to do that. We just focus on one song at a time, put a little video out that we also had to record in the flat because we could barely go outside. Um, so we did singles kind of based on that situation, but we looked at it with all these other songs um, and decided that we wanted to make a longer cohesive thing. So just saying like, <laughs> I know it's not uh, in vogue to make an album. It's, it's uh, more in vogue to make an endless stream of singles and I cut. I, I understand the logic of why that works and why that gets people to engage, especially with a new band. But for us, um, I don't know. We're mu- we're music fans, and we like we like albums. Like we have a great big vinyl collection in the room, um, <laughs> in the living room just over there, like of 
I mean, maybe it's not big compared to some of your vinyl collections. It's like a hundred, which I think is pretty, pretty good, <laughs> in my opinion. Um, that's he's certainly not dipping your toe in if you've got a hundred vinyls. You know, you know. Um, can speak with some authority on the old vinyl records. Um, so we we decided we're we're music fans. We listen to albums. We like albums, and um, due to the nature of like when the songs were written and what they're about and that kind of thing that they just formed like this arc of um kind of like dark to light or kind of like coming through the last year i guess um and not really by design but just by yeah the situation that were written in they became more um (laughs) i suppose they became like lighter and there was this change in mood throughout the song um and some of them the thing you forget is like if you put all these songs out as singles you kind of promote each one the same basically like um and there there is something to be said about albums and album tracks where you can put on songs that are a bit more different to something that you really think everyone should hear because it's like the catchiest thing you do or the um the best or whatever uh there, there is something for album tracks where you can put them out into the collection and go look like <laughs> here's something a bit different or or this mood so there's like some darker songs and there's some instrumentals and there's some stuff that we really enjoy doing but we wouldn't put out as a single and we wouldn't want to put like loads of promotion behind that particular song so we did just have this um set of songs that worked together as a set um and we debated a bit of yeah whether to do it as singles but uh we decided to do it as a full collection and to to truly make it um to truly make it an album so truly like put them in a order that kind of tells the arc of the story and um you know put things like gapless transitions in so it really does feel like this is something you could listen to from end to end whether anyone will do that except me and maybe harry who knows um (laughs) but that's fine um so yeah that was why we decided to make um, an album this year it's also quite hard work like doing just single after single after single because you have to do the whole recording process in a slightly condensed time do the whole video the whole promotion so it depends how regularly you want to do that but there is there's some like batch efficiencies of doing an album, you know. We can do ten drum tracks in four days rather than one in one day, if that makes sense. Um, for yeah, because you have to mic up, get all the sounds, mic up all the instruments, that kind of thing. Anyway, so that was why we decided to do an album this year, and it's going really well so far. Um, I'm glad that we chose to do it. Um, it's been a lot of work, so we basically decided to do it. Um, kind of yeah, like February or so this year, and. Then we started practicing the tracks. So we had loads of demos that mostly I made, but Harry's on some of them when we like traded tracks. Um, actually, he's on most of them. He's on most of them. Um, but we, yeah, so we had like loads of demos of songs that we had to then like get into the practice room and start playing and go like, is this going to be on it? How's this sounding when we actually like try and flesh out the real song just from the demo version? Um, so we did a bit of that in January and February or maybe it was just maybe that was just in early March. But then in uh, towards the end of March, we started actually tracking properly. Decided what tracks we were going to do because we're like we're going to do uh, gapless stuff. So we kind of had to pre-decide like these songs are going on. We're not just going to record a batch and then like whittle down to what goes on. We pre-decided like right these songs are going in this order I think. Um, and so we uh, went to our practice room for about a week in March and recorded all of Harry's drums in some very intense like. <laughs> nine till ten all day sessions um in a stuffy poorly oxygenated room um but it was really good we really like hashed out some great drum tracks then um and then since then so since we did that kind of week in in march and got a pretty good drum sound actually i gotta say um happy with it i think this is probably the best acoustically treated room we've ever recorded drums in not saying that it's great acoustic treatment. I'm saying that the other rooms we've recorded drums in have been pretty trash. So going up in the world. Um, and then since then, it's basically been uh, me laying tracks for the the rest. <laughs> um, so I've been laying down bass, laying down guitars, laying down vocals. And we are almost, literally, I've got a, like a few back and vocals to do. And then we are pretty much through the vocals. And we're going to add some nice toppings of synths and a few things um and then i'm going to be mixing it over the next few weeks and then at least the tracking stage will all be done um yeah literally in the next couple of weeks hopefully before july um 
So yeah, and I don't think the album is actually going to come out for a little bit after that. So we were originally aiming for a sort of June, July release date. Um, but it's taken me longer than I thought um, to get all the tracks down to a suitable standard. Um, but uh, so it looks like the album's going to come out later this year, kind of not quite ho- hoping on September at the moment, um, because as uh, we'll need a bit of time to prep all the release stuff even after the tracks are finished. Um, but yeah, that is super exciting. We don't have a title yet. It's literally in our calendar for next week, come up with album title. So if any listeners to the podcast have an idea of the album title, having not heard any of it, um, I mean, you could probably dig around the internet and find the demos and stuff, but um, yeah, let us know. Because <laughs> we're struggling with the title and we've come up with some real stinkers in the past. So there's a strong risk that we'll come up with another terrible title. Um, so we, we are on high, red alert, as they say, high alert, that we can't come up with another trash title. This has got to be a real, real classic. Um, so, yeah, that is the progress of the new album so far. Um, I, think, uh, I think we're going to sort of drip out details as we as we go. Um, so all I'll sort of say at this moment is that I don't even because I don't even know how many tracks there are. <laughs> um, but, yeah, there's a you know, there's some instrumentals. It definitely goes through some some moods. So there's definitely like this duality of like light and dark and it it kind of progresses into a more like optimistic um vibe towards the end of the album and then there's some um you know there's some songs inspired quite a lot inspired by sort of dreams actually because i don't know if anyone else had this during the whole covid period but it's some pretty like uh what do you call pretty like vivid dreams (laughs) um and so some of those inspired songs i didn't really need to make anything up i just sort of described what what happened or maybe not even what happened but just like pictures of where what the dreams were like so some of the songs um are about that and i think we've then got this theme that we're still kind of teasing out of like how we talk about it but there's this theme of going like in and out of being awake um in and out of consciousness like dreams versus reality that whole thing is like a thread through the whole album um and yeah so it, it's definitely eclectic in terms of uh moods and sounds and um I'd say if you've mostly experienced our band through kind of the live two-piece jams that we do of our songs, um, this will be quite different. But then when we go to play the songs live, we'll play them quite different to how they're on the record because that's just how we like decide to do things. Um, we treat playing the songs live and playing them and like making a record as really two quite different things. Um, I know it's sort of a badge of honor of whether a band is good if they can exactly re- reproduce their record sound live um but we're not going for that at all um i think we can still do a good job of the songs live like hopefully i'll sing in tune um but yeah our aim is to reinterpret the songs for a, a raw like two-piece uh improvised version when we play it live like we're kind of looking for a new way of playing it when we take it on stage um whereas when we're making um a record it but we almost become like a studio band and like uh i was saying like that's why it took so long or it's still taking so long for me to do all my tracks is that um i'm layering like guitars and bass and more instruments than we could possibly play live um so yeah we, we treat those things as kind of different uh different entities so f- i suppose my point is for you for those of you who've seen us jamming as a two-piece in a kind of raw bassless sound maybe you've even criticized us for our lack of basses well you're gonna like this album because it's got bass on it in fact segueing beautifully into my next topic um i bought some new guitars <laughs> for this album including a bass guitar so the irony of having to fend off commenters who say get a bass player all day um i bought a new bass for the album um yeah don't know how i'm gonna live that one down but i'll uh, I'll, I'll show it to you and i'll explain why welcome back me um so (laughs) exhibit a um um so this is a fender precision bass made in japan in some point in the 2010s quite recently i think i think like 2015 or something Yes, so um, you might have seen from our singles, um, if you watched any of the behind the scenes vids or anything like that, or maybe even the music vids, I suppose, um, 
I have been using a cheap ass like fretless bass <laughs> um, in in, a li in alignment with our sort of oh, we don't really need bass <laughs> or bass is not a very important part of our sound kind of thing. Um, we I, I was just using quite a sort of cheap um, yeah a cheap bass basically for basically um, are using like a cheap bass on our on our studio tracks um, but when you know we put so much effort into getting good uh, drum tracks and stuff on this I was I was really like I don't <laughs> I don't want to then layer this kind of trashy slightly trashy sounding bass um, over the top of these new tracks like I think these are a step up from what we've done done before and I want to I want to take the step two. I want to up, up and away. Um, nothing against the fretless bass. It served us well and it has quite a unique sound. But it's also quite hard to play notes in tune. <laughs> like if you're just playing like a normal bass line and not like slippy sliding all over the neck. Um, it's actually really hard to play in tune bass notes. So you'd spend half the time recording trying to find where like the actual D note is. Like... Um, so I gave up on that um, and kind of impulse bought um, a P bass having researched like what basses sound good. Um, shout out to our friend Aaron um, because he, a few months ago, said he bought a P bass and said it just it just works. It sounds like a record. It just fits. It's the best sounding bass. Everyone wants. Everyone uses it for a reason. That's why I got a P bass. So I was going into this going, come on, like not everyone uses a P bass. It can't perfectly fit like it must just be a choice but there's loads of choices out there and there are loads of choices out there but i listened to them i was like yeah the p-bass works um he was right um so i bought p-bass <laughs> reluctantly because i wanted to, i wanted some sort of original twist you know but i couldn't find it um but uh it, it sounds absolutely great um i can't say i sort of had a i can't say i fell in love with it because me trying to come up with bass tracks was properly hard work <laughs> like i'm not a natural bass player like i have to listen really really hard to the drum like kick and snare patterns um and then i have to think uh you know being like a sort of posy um attention seeking guitar player i'm usually trying to pick things that like stand out and like bass you only want a tiny bit of that at the really right moments it's an art in itself bass playing for sure um of of when to be supporting when to be playing something that catches the ear um, when to be playing exactly on the kick pattern, when to like vary it up. Um, trying to find, trying to find something, yeah, catchy, but that doesn't overtake the main song. But like, if you tuned into it, you'd hear it. It's a whole art in itself. Um, I had to educate myself on how to do it. Um, hence, it took at least a month, maybe more, um, of doing it in my spare time, I guess, um, outside of my job and stuff, and just whole weekends, whole, um, you know, days off of work, <laughs> sat here playing bass fingers blistered um it was real it was real um and then guitars was sort of less uh less dramatic than that um i actually just used the guitars that i already own for that um so i'll show you some of them so first of all um one of the guitars oh, i forget that i'm on audio as well so uh, i need to make sure i describe um to to the camera james shows orange strat like guitar um so that's one of the ones I used. Um, I didn't use it on too much of the studio stuff, actually. It's kind of a thin, like a thinner sounding guitar and sounds best um, like live or through a PA or, or through something where it's kind of naturally thickens up a bit or is like direct, sort of direct in um, recording. It can be quite a thin sounding guitar. So I used it in some bits where we needed a bit more jangly sound, but actually predominantly I used other two other guitars um, for the guitar tracking. Um, so, use the Gibson ES339, which was um, a birthday present from ages ago, um, which is a guitar I was going to sell because um, I don't really use this. <laughs> I've used it a bit, but I've kind of moved um, my sort of preference of like feel and sound of guitars moved to a slightly more like Fender style um, stuff, particularly with this band. So I was going to sell it because I wasn't using it too much, but it... Um, it's got a yeah, it's got a bit of a thicker sound, which I felt for um a few songs on this album it actually worked quite well in like a studio context. Um and I've recorded most of um our last album and our first EP, so most other two Kaneka stuff is recorded with that guitar. Um so it's got like a studio guitar thing going for it. I don't know. It just seems to fit whenever I come to actually record the songs rather than play them live. Um so yeah, that, that guitar's kind of kind of bounced back. Um and I've used it on pretty much every song. Um 
sounding great. Um, I'm really, yeah, I have a love-hate relationship with the sound of it. <laughs> There's some days I'm just like, oh, this isn't it. And then some days where, like, just the compressed, like, muddy humbuckerness um, is cool. So um, that's on a lot of the, the ones. And then my kind of wild card. is um james shows orange another orange guitar with a filtertron pickup single pickup maple neck he shows that to the camera um so that's this is my um again parts sort of part scaster homemade um guitar that i made in 2020 called a cabronita um and a tv jones pickup is just a really unique sounding pickup they're on like gretsch guitars um how, how to describe the sound it's kind of a mix between a it's a sort of, I don't know it's just a unique sound um kind of kind of closer to single coily quite like trebly um quite bitey sort of sound if you think Gretsch like George early George Harrison kind of Beatles stuff um I think Jack White uses one now but covers it in so much distortion that you maybe maybe you wouldn't know that it was a Gretsch kind of rockabilly like country stuff sometimes uses it but it also distorts really well um so uh that I use that for like double tracking guitars um, because it just has such a unique sound that like you pair it up with another guitar and you get quite a wide thing. Whereas maybe on its own, you wouldn't use that um, for everything. But um, yeah, on some like big distorted guitars, for instance, like it's cool to have that on the other side. It's got this like more panoramic kind of vibe. Um, so those were the main three. <laughs> um, I have also <laughs> recently Impulse bought um, a new guitar which is set to become my kind of go-to. I might even sell maybe one of these others to help fund this, but um, I basically, I'm looking for like, uh, maybe this would be another podcast. Maybe it would be another podcast that I'll talk about this guitar on its own. Um, but you'll see in videos that now my main guitar that I'll be using is this PRS Swamp Ash with three narrow field pickups. It's sort of like their version of a strap before they did the Silver Sky. Um, and it's uh, is limited edition in like 2010, so one came up used. I've been hunting for it, it for a while because I want because I'm into the Strat sound, but wanted something a bit thicker. And I love the sound of the PRS narrow field pickups that are really hard to get on like any guitar that's less than like four grand. Um, and uh, yeah, I just love the sound of them. I wanted this like in between single coil and P90 sound. Um, I was going to build my own other like my other own guitar, and I realised that I think PRS already made it. I just need to get source one um one came on on used i've been hunt like tracking hunting for ages and one came up used and um, so i snapped it up um and the next day it was mine um and um it's awesome it sounds absolutely just oh I, I it's so close to my perfect guitar tone i've got to say um but i'll do a podcast on that one individually because i don't want to bore everyone else with guitar stuff um but yes new album has resulted in acquisition of plenty of new guitars <laughs> Harry used the same drum kit that he's been using since he was, what, like 13. So <laughs> one of us has a problem and it's not Harry. Um, but yeah, that's um, that's kind of a... Uh, do I have anything else to say on the new album yet? Um, and I suppose I didn't specifically say that we've not gone into a studio for this. We're recording it all ourselves with our own, um, our own equipment, um, which... Uh, we've done which we've done with the past two i think this is going to be a, like a step up in sound recorded like real acoustic drums which sound just just great um so much more like feel and vibe to them than the electric ones from our previous two singles which i don't think sounded bad but i think this is like fingers crossed as long as i don't mess it up um it's going to sound like more pro than the stuff we've done before um so yeah it should be coming in september i suppose the only other thing is you may have seen on facebook if you're listening to this podcast around when i publish it in june 2021 um but we're looking at doing shows again um we we've been doing a decent amount of like practicing <laughs> um live streaming and like doing clips from our practices and jams and that kind of thing um but like in anticipation of things opening up a bit more like later this year and next year we're we're starting to like get an idea of how much appetite there is out there for us to go play shows basically um and so if uh there's a there's like a good oh, maybe i'll put the form in the show notes or something but there's um we, we put out basically a little form 
for people to fill in if they want to come see us play. Um, this is either in the UK or abroad, but we'll probably start in the UK um, like this year, early next year. And if we've got enough um, like appetite and it kind of makes sense, then we'll uh, look to go to the US and Canada at some point um, because I know we have a decent number of fans, particularly in Canada. And we're going down well in Canada. Um, so we do want to go there eventually. It's just sort of when it when it works out. But um, I think we're initially starting the UK. So um, just f if I put a link to the form in the uh, uh, notes of this video slash podcast, uh, you can fill that out and let us know that you want to show, like let us know your name, email, and um, where where you're at. And we're going to try and work out where we're going to do the shows based on where the people are. Revolutionary. Um so yeah, that's where we're at. Um out of self isolation, which is good. A few weeks out of that. Um yeah, just been I mean, we've been a bit quieter, I suppose, in terms of podcasts, in terms of um putting up jams and stuff, because we've just been recording um, you know, this album in all of our all of our spare time, particularly mine. I've done some some crazy long days laying down guitars, bass, whatever. Um but I think it's gonna be cool. It's gonna cover a lot of moods. Um, uh, I'll try and finish it soon before I buy any more guitars to to get me over the line. Um, but all good. I think I'm going to end the podcast there. A healthy 26 minutes. Um, update on the new album, the new guitars, and we're hopefully doing some live shows again. So check out the show notes for the booking form thing. This doesn't mean that you have to like actually book us or a venue or whatever. It's just saying, oh, I want to come see a show and I live here, and then we can factor in like where all the people are to get shows near the people. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much for listening to the Toucan Echo podcast, the return of the Toucan Echo podcast. And um, hopefully we'll be back more regularly and I'll try and try and get Harry on it too. Um, right. See ya.